cheering. I love it. All right, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Hannah from Fellbetter. So pleased to be here. And so elated to be doing a talk with BSL Interpretation. Thank you. Uh, you may know Fellbetter. This is what we do. Uh, this is marketing these games is what I do. And I spend a lot of time thinking about how to do it efficiently. Uh, Fall in London is going to be 10 in January, so a lot of who's played Fall in London? Like everyone! <laughs> we have a million accounts registered down the years, which sounds like a lot, but you know, a bunch of people registered once and never played, but it's still loads! My job is done. Um, <laughs> and I look after Sunless Skies and Sunless Sea as well, and part of my marketing is to remind and mention that they're going to be ported next year to Switch and Xbox and PS4, which is very exciting. I'm marketing them right now. <laughs> job done again, tick, well done Flynn. Okay, whenever I talk to developers, developer teams, who don't have a marketer for any reason, I hear a lot of similar things. And I'm guessing that a lot of people here are independent creators or market, are making games in a small team. Are you making a game right now? Any, yeah, pretty much lots, yeah, more than half, two thirds of you. You might recognize these feelings. So the first step to doing good marketing is recognizing that it is hard. Um, and the talk that I've prepared for you today is for anyone who does not do this all the time. I do this 40 hours a week, so if that's not what you're about, hopefully something I say will be useful to you today. That's the first thing. Uh, recently I injured my hand, I lost a feeling in two fingers of my hand, and it really forced me to slow down, which coincided with the time in which I was preparing these slides for you. So I'm feeling really like philosophical. <laughs> and philosophy, but also practicality is what I'm aiming for today. Um, the philosophical element of what I have to say is that your game is like a seed. It's your precious little seed and you need to plant it and you need to water it. You need to look after it if you want it to bear fruit. It is your job as its creator to cultivate it. And my approach to marketing uh, on a small scale is about cultivation. Because as they say, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is today. Um, we're going to have some practical advice today about what to focus on and how to prioritize different marketing things, um, because the last thing anybody wants is for another independent creator to put their all into a game and for it to receive no, uh, no attention at all and no players and to burn out and quit out. That's, I, I hate to see it happen, and I really want, hopefully, people today will go away with something that will stop that from happening. So, start with your own strengths. No one else can do what you're doing. No one can make the game that you're making. And you care about this game most of anyone in the world. So, enact that in your marketing. Talk in your own voice, be yourself, be authentic. Bring yourself to, to the marketing of your game. People love to support a small team. They love to know it's one person, two people. They love to be impressed by that. Let them be impressed by your efforts. This is a narrative game conference, so I'm assuming those of you who are making games are proud of your stories. Uh, make a few people love the story in your game. It's much more important than making a lot of people like it. Get comfortable talking about it. Talk to everyone you meet about it. Explain it to your gran, explain it to people on the bus. Practice doing that and getting over the reticence to talk about your own work. And share some secrets in your marketing. A lot of the time I speak to independent creators and they say, oh no, I can't talk about this yet. Oh no, that's something that they really have to discover in the game. We are releasing a new mascot into Sunless Skies next week exclusive news and you in the game you have to go to a certain place you have to do a certain thing to find her to discover her within the game but she is the point of the update she is the big news she is a wonderful brand new urchin character so 
it might feel like a secret, but you're thinking with your game hat on. The news is, new mascot for your ship in sunless skies. This secret no merchant. So um, find a way to get over your reticence to share secrets about your work. And uh, don't worry too much about spoilers. Something is a spoiler if it is like the solution to the puzzle in the game. But the existence of the puzzle is not a spoiler. This is why I recommend starting with a sustainable schedule of about three hours work a week. It is very much a case of slow and steady winning the race. Good marketing goes alongside good sustainable development. Try and have the same spirit for both. Hammering a lot of marketing in the two weeks before launch is not viable. Even if you had a lot of money, the way the indie market is, you need to build trust with players over a longer period of time. And that you are personally healthy and able to keep going is as important as, well, it's more important than trying to push through a lot of marketing activity very, very quickly. Aim to do a little bit every week. As you get closer to launch, change the balance, maybe do a little bit more. Dial down your game work as you finish polishing, dial up your marketing work. And contrary to the spirit of, of this, but for as long as you can once you've finished the game, build in some purely marketing time for the big, big hype moment for launch or for wh whatever you, you feel your key moment is. Um, that kind of velocity is what you need to create impact when you launch a game. You need to add a lot of fuel to the fire for the very, very last second. My marketing campaign for Sunless Skies took me about two years to develop and create and come up with everything, and then it was all basically aiming to four hours of stuff, which achieved us a top four placement on Steam, which achieved us all this conversation and interest and sales that we needed. But that's the window. That's the last-minute window. You have to do the two years to get the four hours. There is also no rule book. I try new stuff all the time. I have the luxury of, of lots of time and experience to do this. But you can throw away ideas you have about what marketing is, like big flashy campaigns and advertising. There are loads of blogs out there on Gama Sutra, uh, the, the game development subreddits, all of the UK um, game uh, industry websites. Read up about what people who've done similar games recently have been doing and see what you like of what they did and what you feel like would work for your game. And then nick it and update it and make it yours. Like, we're all learning from each other. Um, I would never stop anyone from trying to copy the campaign for Sunless Skies. It might not work for them, but taking elements of stuff that already exists is what we do when we're making games, like when none of us are making from a blank page. So apply that to your marketing as well. What is what I do? It's really simple. Look, you only have to do two things. <laughs> Find the people who will like your stuff and talk to them until they buy your thing. Ideally, for, for me with Sunless Guys, it, buy it in that four hour period where we have a chance of charting on Steam I've got a whole separate talk about the difference between Steam in 2019 and 2015. I won't go there. But it's really manageable. And this is your strategy, free today from a seasoned, experienced marketer. That's it. Grow a community. Ask them to support you at the key moment. The key moment probably is going to be launched for you. If you're looking to sell some copies, the best thing you can aim for is to get the people who have been supporting you all along to speak up on your behalf when you launch. The volume of conversation that you create will, with some luck, turn into sales. And this, I think, is all you have to do and the order in which you need to do it. This is your priority list. We're going to go on into some detail on these, but your store page, I think, is much more important than people give it credit for. So we're going to go into some detail about how to put one together. Um, your press kit needs to include everything a journalist could need. I will tell you what that is. And you need some ongoing way of communicating with your players, your community. Email is great on social media. Uh, your reach to people who already follow you can be cut by the platforms, but you've already, when you have someone's email, you kind of always have their email. 
Um, and Twitter is good because there's a community of people on there who are interested in indie games. There's a, an established screenshot Saturday hashtag. There are ways of finding people. If you can stomach Twitter, not everyone can. Uh, but you need to find one that you're comfortable with that you will be happy to use regularly. Um, there's no point setting up a Discord and a Twitter and a subreddit and all these things and then never using them. It's wasted effort. Let's start with store presence, the nitty gritty. You need to set up your store page and then review it periodically, like every two weeks. Uh, giving yourself thinking time between setting it up and looking at it will help the, the copy on the page mature in your head and you'll get an idea of what a fresh pair of eyes looking at it will be seeing. Trying to do it all, of, all at once won't give your ideas breathing room, so in your nominal three hours a week, every two weeks devote an hour to reviewing your Steam page. This is a slice of the Sun the Skies Steam page. Um, people are looking at your page every day and making a decision then about whether to support or buy your game. Do they want to try it now? Do they want to wish list it? Wait for a sale? You need to show them that you care, that development is active. Uh, your store page is the best place to do it. It is your book cover and your shop front. It is your window. Uh, we created the page for Sun the Skies like two years ago. I review the content, as I say, about every two weeks. Um, and we use everything that Steam makes available to us. So whatever platform you're selling on, use all the tools they give you to be relevant. Make sure you tag. Make sure, uh, so what we've done here is a bundle with some other games on a post-apocalyptic management theme. So everyone who sees one of those games on the list and like, oh, we're pally with those developers. That legitimizes the game page I'm looking at. I liked that one, maybe I'll like this one. It all contributes to like the health of your page. Um, <laughs> And I review the description of the game. I look for stuff that has been added to the game, which really would needs to be brought out in the page. And we also, you can't quite see it there, but we add gameplay GIFs into the copy on the store page to illustrate exactly like the, the way that you make a choice in the game. So that the passing Steam browser, who's basically looking, is, is, is this like a game I've played before? Do I like this genre? Make the genre and the the doing, the verbs of the game, really, really clear in the trailer, in the imagery, in the copy, in the GIFs. Hammer it home. And we do updates to the page as announcements as, as regularly as we can. The last couple are within uh, a month or so. So it looks like we still care. Like, oh, is this going to keep getting updated? What if there are problems with it? We're still there. We still care. So the game is kind of worth them investing in. There's a whole talk to be done about trailers, but basically you, want, you need to understand exactly what you do in the game from watching it, so get the verbs there on screen. Not necessarily written, but it needs to be obvious. If you're a crafting game, crafting the thing. Ding! Like, put that in and make it less than a minute, please, for God's sake. <laughs> They're so long, most trailers. Uh, make the page sing and dance. <laughs> Gifts are good, illustrate the, what your game is, what it does. Um, why would someone play it? Show it to them. Show them why they would play it. Give them the best bits. The bits that we thought might be secret, give them the best bits. We put an eye in the trailer for Sunless Sea, you know, boom, massive eye under the water, and people forget that they've seen it in the trailer. It makes them buy the game, and then they uh, fall off their seat when they see it in the game. And hero art, really, really important. It's the headline, like, capsule image, they call it on Steam. The headline image for your game it needs to be really clear, easy to read, and it has to sell the game you're making. So just to show you some ideas that we had for the hero art of Sunless Skies. We did a survey, actually, with our players to find out what these images made them think of. Uh, top right is really obviously to do with fallen London, so that's the image we use for our Kickstarter. It says, Victorians in space, what? Like, it's quite mysterious. But the, when we did a survey with people who didn't know our stuff, the overwhelming, like, what do you think you do? What do you think this means? The overwhelming was, response was, oh, which is not good enough for Steam. And in the end, bam, we went with this train. This is the hero what we use right now. It was a really long process to get to it. But doing that work, 
means that we have something that's really strong. It's really impactful. It works big. It works tiny. It is a train in space. That's what you do in this game. And it is the best damn looking train in space on Steam. We made sure of it. Uh, the f like, even stuff like we used a, a font with serifs. So it says, like literary, it says a game about words, a little bit. So it gives people an overall impression of what we're trying to do. And here's like, if you wanted to take a picture of a task list, this is an idea of a task list that you could do for, for putting together your Steam store page. Um, have a go at writing the description in a few different ways. Look at other people's pages. They've, they've done it. Like, look at a page that you think works really well and ask yourself why. Be direct in your copy. A lot of the time, so I do, um, on Wednesdays when I'm on the train to the office, I do Steam store page review, where people send me their pages and I critique them and help make them work harder. And a lot of the pages I get from indie developers are written in what they think is marketing copy. In a world where blah, blah. You don't need to do that. You need to speak as yourself. Be clear and be specific. The amount that start with, in a world where... It makes it into a very generic page that could be about any game, me game. Make it specific to your game. Test all the words and take out generic stuff and filler that you don't need. Get to the point. It's really, really hard to get out of your own head when you're writing a Steam page because you're making the thing as well. So um, get it on Twitter. Like Share it with other game developers. Do Steam Store page review. Send it to me on a Wednesday. And remember, it, remember to show it to people who know nothing about what you're doing, because they will have questions. The other half of making a good page is making one that is complete factually and accurate factually. Controller support, yes, no, how much? It has to be accurate to what you're buying, uh, because any kind of discrepancy there will destroy trust. The press. Your press kit is like that, but for journalists. And I've nicked one from, uh, oh no, I haven't. Hey, I nicked one from Vlambeer, because we don't have a very good one, uh, <laughs> which is my fault. Um, but Vlambeer, Rami from Vlambeer put together a tool called Do Press Kit. And it makes press kits for people who are more familiar with the game development side. And it shows you exactly how, on this tool, how to put everything in that you need to show, all the key information that journalists want and need. When we did the press kit for Sunless Skies, initially I hadn't put in enough imagery options, so we ended up with people taking a transparent version of that train with no background and using it for their, for their articles, and it's just like every marketer's nightmare. So they, they not only want a big, beautiful version of your logo, but give them all the layers, give them the words, the, the train by itself, the background by itself, give them everything they could possibly need to make an article out of your game. Give them no impediment. Make sure they don't even have to Google a single word. Put it all in one place and just pass it to them like, huh, like that. Because there's a million other things happening and anything that stops them could be the thing that stops you getting that coverage. How to find journalists. This is another nice little thing that you can do a little bit of every week. <laughs> journalists are people, and you want to find them, say, on Twitter, and send them a link, or just open a conversation with them in a non-creepy way, and do that as early and regularly as you can. Find journalists who've enjoyed games that are like yours, and just talk to them about your game. Then your press list will be small, but relevant, and much more likely to return a hit. And yeah, maybe you become friends with journalists. That's kind of cool. They're great people. <laughs> Lastly, community communication. People talk a lot about wishlisting. We ran a wishlist campaign before Sunless Skies came out. These days, I would recommend following on Steam instead. Uh, a wishlist means something different to a player. When you wishlist something, what are you saying? Oh, uh, yeah, I might, I might get that. If it's on sale later, I, I might buy it some future time. Following is much more valuable. People get to see your development updates in their Steam news feeds if they're following you. They get to hear more about your story. They get to know you. And followers convert much more reliably to sales at launch. 
like 40%, I think, the, the stat I had was 40% of your follower count at launch will convert. Mileage may vary. We don't have anything coming out that's new soon, so I'm trying to raise the amount of followers on our publisher page. Please follow our publisher page. Um, collect them, right, on Steam and on another platform that you like that you can stomach. It's a lot of time, um, but you can take a look at the Twitters of lots of other game dev folk, follow them, follow the people that they follow. Like, it, it's, it's very organic and natural. Um, and remember in all of this, keep in mind that it's really useful to be part of the indie community, but other developers are not necessarily going to buy your game. We spend a, long, a lot of time in the games world and everybody has a, a backlog of 100 titles. But following other developers will help you learn about their audience and getting them to retweet your stuff will help you find adjacent audiences to your own and that's how you grow. Um, there are a huge number of people online who are doing the same thing you are and they're no threat to you. Everyone is, can have a piece of this thing that we're all doing. Um, so participate. Eyeball somebody in the crowd who you saw is making a game. Who's making a game? Look at them. F pick one with your eyes. And afterwards, introduce yourself to them. I see you waving. P introduce yourself to them. Swap information with them. Follow one another. Begin that network now. Or, or continue your network. You've all got wonderful networks. Continue that network now. I, I don't see anybody. Look. Look. This is like the bit in church where you have to shake hands. Look. <laughs> Things you don't need to do. I've just given you a load of stuff to do. I, I hereby absolve you of these things. Do not make a 3D printed model of the lead character in your game and post it to Eurogamer's office. Don't do it. It's going to go into the bin or landfill that people won't care about a character from a game that they haven't played and don't know anything about. And they, they end up on people's desks. So invest your efforts in digital and global outreach to journalists via friendship and not in printing stuff and sending it to their office. This is the first thing that independent creators say to me when I say, so are you doing any marketing? They're like, yeah, actually, I've packed up a load of vintage keys in a bag, and I'm going to send them, like, addressed to Johnny Chiodini, and he's going to open it. Wow! No, don't do that. Um, you don't need a press event. Think digitally. You don't need to buy advertising. If you have money and you have somebody helping you to do advertising, go for it. You can get a lot of value from press at launch that you would also get from advertising. We did a tiny ad campaign for Sunless Skies that was really focused at launch and basically just to remind people that it was there. But um, advertising is like pure maths to me and I don't recommend anybody who gets into it unless you have a lot of time and money to practice and learn how to do it. It's a whole separate thing to marketing and it scares the bejesus out of me. So. I don't personally recommend it. And you don't need to be on the road doing events 15 weeks of the year, getting sick and losing development time. Absolutely apply for all the free ones you can get into and the local ones. And when you need to be there, when you need playtesting and you're not available digitally, but you need physical playtesting and, and feedback, go down and do it. But don't feel that if you're not going to res and to all the events that you're missing out. You're not. Marketing it can be easy. The lessons, chunk it up. Do it in tiny pieces across as long a period of time as you can. Prioritize getting your storefront right. That is the main thing that will, will encourage people to buy. They have to get there, but when they're there, give them no reason to not buy your game. And keep it regular and be sustainable and take care of yourselves and start today. Thank you.